The name of this show is Living Wisdom, and I'm Patty Paul. Today, I'm happy to have my, my friend Dale Carley as a guest again. And Dale is a channel. He'll be channeling our mutual friend, Barada. So, Dale, welcome. It's just great to have you here. Thank you, Patty. And you. Um, I have a number of things I'd like Barada to talk about. So, without further ado, Absolutely. I invite you to <laughs> begin your channeling process. Okay. Oh, yes, we are here. Right on cue. Your <laughs> timing is just great, I must say. Welcome to the show again. It's a delight to be back. <laughs> uh, again, I have some current event topics that I'd like to offer to you uh, and invite your insights and wisdom about them. All right. Uh, the first one, let's say, is the power crisis issue. Uh, this is April of 2001, and in California, of course, we the, the topic of uh, the power shortage or c power crisis that's been talked about so much recently. Yes. And also uh, power in the petroleum industry. Sometimes we have gas shortages, or the price of gas is uh, ex very expensive. Yes. So that'll be one area that I'll offer to you and invite you to talk about. Another uh, subject that is very dear to my heart, and that's the crop circle phenomenon. Um, I've learned quite a bit about crop circles on my own over the years, and um, I'd like your insights that perhaps can, can offer the audience something new to see in that phenomenon, something new to understand. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's start with those items and uh, take as long as you want to talk about them. All right. Now, your first issue. Well, no, let us go in reverse. All right. Yes. The crop circles. You understand that the crop circles are an expression of variations in, in the, the energy of the planet, yes? Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, it is, it is the, the intersecting vortices of energy that play in w very mystical ways. Uh, they interplay with one another, and they express what could be called very magical synergies as they collide, as they inter interconnect, as they play. And there is a communication that occurs on many levels between w that consciousness that is Earth, the consciousness that are the nature spirits, and the consciousness that is all that is, the goddess. God, all that is, all that exists and is aware of itself and knows your name. <laughs> and it is as if in this intersection of energy, a joy happens, a wonderful joy. And it expresses itself in this way. of the, the crops themselves bowing, mm -hmm. yes, lying down. Now, it is not that they're saying, yes, hello, we bow to you, no, no, but, but that is the result. It is a lying down along the ley lines, and these wonderful formations occur. And you know from having visited there yourself that the resonance in these places is transcendent. Yes. It is beyond anything that you might experience even a few yards away. Yes? Yes. And so that sense of the resonance of joy holds itself there for a time. Mm 
Yes, I might mention to the audience, because they might not be aware, that we're talking about this particular area of southern England that's known as the Sacred Landscape. The sacred worshiping site of Avebury is located in this area. Uh, Avebury, where the goddess has been worshipped for thousands of years. And also, um, almost at the other end, is Stonehenge, where traditionally God was worshipped. Do I have that right? Yes. Or close yes, to? Yes, All absolutely. Right. So that's, that's why this particular area of England that we're talking about, that you're referring to now, has this um, sacred energy. Yes, mm -hmm. very much so. It, it, it works both ways. You understand there is a, a resonance that remains from the worship that occurred there, but there is also a recognition in those who worshipped. There was a recognition in those who worshipped of the energy already at play. Ah, okay. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the coming together of, of of beams of energy, oh. of light and love that came together to send messages in their own way, in their own kind of communication, expressions of joy, waving hello to the goddess, yes? Would this also involve what has been called Gaia energy, the Earth's yes, consciousness? Yes, very too? much involved ah. there, yes. Absolutely. That is not all. It is components mm -hmm. thereof that have consciousness, you understand. Yes. There, there is consciousness and then consciousness within consciousness, as you have inside of your own body. Yes. Each cell has its own consciousness at its level. And so, yes, you have consciousness reaching for more consciousness, reaching for more levels of itself, reaching for more of what is its potential. And so you have these various beams of energy, these ley lines, and these sprouts of energy producing these wonderful mystical designs that are at one fractal, at another geometric, and so on. Yes. I just mentioned to between the shows today that mentioned to Dale that I had recently taped two shows about crop circles and I showed a lot of the beautiful aerial photographs of the designs from the last few years and uh, it's too bad we don't have some photos to mm -hmm. share to, with the audience today but I didn't bring any I wasn't even sure I would mention this mm -hmm. subject. Yes. Um, another part of this crop circle phenomenon yes. that amazes me is how the world media really is blind to the whole thing. It's almost if they, as if they're ignoring it, except for once in a while they'll have a sound bite on the news show and dismiss the whole thing as a man-made hoax. Yes, well, you understand that, that there are many issues at play here. One is, is the the comfort of categories, <laughs> all right? Uh, th th there is a, uh, quite an attachment to comfortability and to sameness, and, and categorization uh, is one way. It is a judgment, absolutely. It is a judgment, a categorization of, of many, many things that occur in your world that are uh, anomalies, that are things that cannot be explained, uh, but, but do repeat themselves, and so they are repeating anomalies. <laughs> they are mysteries. And and mystery can be very uncomfortable to to uh, to people, and so there is this concept of categorizing so as to make it neatly fit into what already exists from their point of view, and so Loch Ness monster is one of these things, Bigfoot is another, and so it becomes a hoax or a probable hoax. Whatever it is that's needed in terms of language to make it comfortable, to make it uh, not necessary to explore beyond the bounds of comfortable limitation. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So people don't have to think too much and try to figure out what's going on. Oh, right, because it, ca it, quest it calls into question everything. Anytime you pull one of these threads on the sweater, you understand, yes. it starts to unravel. And that is what your reality is. You understand, it is, it is a finely woven sweater. But if you were to unravel it, then you could perhaps create a new, bigger sweater. Yes. Or a n one of new colors, or one of a, a more finely woven uh, pattern. Uh, th there, all the potentials are there, but not until you unravel the original sweater. Yes. And so, by pulling these threads of any of these mysteries, there is that threat of things coming unraveled. Yes, because if people yes. start seeing that maybe these things are possible and maybe there is no logical quote unquote explanation then they might have to look at certain other things that are taken for granted and, yes. and maybe they might have to question those hence the domino theory uh, yeah. would apply yes yeah. things would begin to 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 change <laughs> 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 people talk about change but when it comes to actually dealing with fears and stuff and yes, absolutely. It, I, I understand what you're saying it's more comfortable often to just ignore yes yes uh -huh. and we, we you had another issue you wanted to discuss yes yeah. uh, this power crisis as yes. it's been called uh, that involves e energy electricity mm. and yes mm. and we did want to discuss that after the 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 crop circles oh. for one very important reason power consumption is an extension of resource consumption all right california has a unique uh, shall we say uh, accelerated process with the issue of resource consumption California as a group of people, as a state with an identity unto itself, as being, shall we say, forward-thinking, um, shall we say, mm, on the fringe, on the, the frontier of many issues. It is not the only state with that kind of, of a focus, but it is one of them. For example, mis emission control laws, etc. And so power consumption, and hence resource consumption, is one of these issues. And so, when in the process of growth, humanity or a human being is coming close to, shall we say, a cusp of decision making, we borrow from from a Robert Heinlein novel, a science fiction novel, Stranger in a Strange Land. Uh -huh. uh, when you come to a cusp where a decision must be made, very often there is a crisis where your integrity, your growth, no longer allows a particular relationship to an issue such as resource consumption. that you create a crisis to give yourself the time and space to examine, to acknowledge, to forgive and to change, forgive yourself and to change whatever is going on. And in this case, there is a crisis, absolutely, which is an opportunity to change direction in how power is consumed, but also how power is sourced. Yes. All right. The crisis is an opportunity that you have all collectively created. Not to blame, not to blame. This is an opportunity to take responsibility in the most positive sense, to say, all right, here we have this opportunity that we have created because we are ready to make changes that are more substantial than ever before in our relationship to power consumption, how we use the power we create, mm -hmm. and also how we create the power to begin with. And 
Oh, we know that you are well aware of the many ways in which power can be created. Some of the new ones that are coming up involve the use of hydrogen. Yes, it is finally beginning to peak over the horizon. The use of hydrogen, the most abundant element in your, in your environment, shall we say, the most abundant element is hydrogen. And new ways of using that element with complete non-pollution oh. are beginning to surface now in your reality. There are scientists who are um, investigating that and experimenting with yes. that? Yes. Complete non-polluting power source. Yes. That's good news. Yes, it is good news for your planet. This is good news for humanity. And so this is on the leading edge, of course. Mm -hmm. This is on the horizon, but it is there. And this, among many other choices, what about cold fusion? That's one yes, option that fusion. I had heard about might come available. Absolutely. Another option that is just beyond the horizon, just about to peek its head over. Yes, cold fusion. Another option, another possibility. Again, non-polluting. And non-threatening uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Another one that I had heard might be possible is somehow harnessing electromagnetic energy which is most abundant too in our world. Yes, absolutely, and that being another course that is being explored. Not quite as, as near term, ah. but yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, that's good news, and I'm yes. glad to hear that there are scientists who are working on those alternatives. Yes, yes, and, and it is important to hold it, for the individual to hold it as a priority and to be on the lookout for opportunities to support it, either oh, by okay. writing a letter oh, okay. or, or simply by visualizing, yes, this is what I want. I don't want less than this. I want non-polluting power. I want non-polluting resources. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this will find its way into all aspects of power consumption. Great. So that yes. would include uh, the possibility that, that, that um, alternatives could be found for the use of petroleum. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There, there's already a great deal of, of motion in that direction through the, the hybrid, um, yes. hybrid engines, etc. But, but yes much is coming very quickly that will eliminate pollution yes. in those engines that are produced, yes, in those machinery, in the machinery that is produced to create power, to create energy, etc. When you referred to California as um, having unique needs for power consumption, mm -hmm. yes. words to that effect, were you referring to like areas like Silicon ba Valley where the, the computer and technology industry has a stronghold and so they use a lot of power? Is that what you were talking about? Not exactly. Ah. There is a relationship to power consumption and resource consumption that is, shall we say, on the leading edge. All right? The leading edge in terms of consciousness about making changes. Oh. All right? And so in a good way. Here in a very good way. Okay. Yes. Yes. Such as metaphysicians taking back their power and others taking back their power. Is that yes. what you're referring to? Yes. Partially. Yes. And and even on the more broad scope that uh, California, Oregon, uh, the state of Washington, these West Pacific Rim states, yes, the, they, they, they tend to have more of a soft spot in their heart for the environment, yes? That's true, yes. And, uh, and they, uh, in spite of the fact of a great deal of industry here. And so there is, there is a lot of energy 
mental, emotional, mm -hmm. spiritual energy devoted towards the shifting of that reality. And it has impact. It has impact. Oh, that's great. That, that caring yes, that the, we have. The caring, absolutely. The caring. Oh, that's the caring. good to know. The making of a priority. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. Um, Barada, perhaps you can help explain the relationship that we have with the elements, with weather. Uh, at the time this show is being taped, um, the Mississippi River has recently flooded the areas around it, and mm -hmm. fires have been out of control in Florida. A uh, tornado, I think, hit Kansas. Now, of course, this is not news, I mean, as far as the first time these things have happened, but this might be an opportunity for people to understand a bit more about the relationship we have. Well, this is a large subject to, uh, to, uh, to deal with, but there are, uh, there are many levels to it, you see. There is the personal level of something big happening that upsets one's life, all right? Uh, uh, or where, where a person is, uh, actually departs this earth, that something big is happening and, and it can be a nightmare. And that involves the, the issues of relationship to reality in general, of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of feeling like the, the, the nightmare is out there and it's going to get me, you understand? Yes. And, and that, is, that is an unfortunate choice in terms of what it is believed is possible. That that this is this is my destiny. You mm -hmm. understand it. it uh, I I can't believe it is possible for a positive dream to be created, to, for a positive uh, future to be yes. had. I I and think I understand what you're saying. And that that is on the most personal level of, mm -hmm. of the, the the allowance of these things to to have impact, etc. But and then on the grander level, that there is there are economic concerns of of, of just when. And again, having to do with beliefs, just when things are, are, are going good, they start to fall apart. You know, these things happen to a larger group of people. And, and then on the, on the grandest scale, it is the, the major shifts happening at this time of this year. And, and there is profound change going on. And on a global level, you see a, a reaching for a new way of doing things. All right, and for this to occur, there needs to be an environment of great electromagnetic energy, and that is expressed through through these these many very large earth changes that are going on. Uh, you have these storms and and these tornadoes and and these fires, and, and it is a, a, a clearing, a very much a clearing kind of energy. Uh, but also a very disruptive kind of energy. And for those who work with, directly with the energy, work with the energy of change, and how do I change, and, and is it a struggle, is it a, is it a great difficulty, or do I meet it head on and say, all right, I want to work with this as it comes and mitigate the energy and, and have a more, more elegant kind of change operation going on? That is one aspect of it from the global, or shall we say the personal, to the global and back to the personal, all right? Yeah. And, and, and with, with such limited time, it is difficult to go farther. It than I, that, I do yes. understand it's a vast subject yeah, with vast many subject, yes. different aspects to it. Yes. So I yes. appreciate the fact that you've addressed it and given kind of an overview uh, in that way. One additional thing we would say yes. is, 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 is to understand that, that it is not punishment. For those who, who might view it as such, it is not. And we, we would say to you, let it be something else. Yes. Let it be that there is great change going on. Let it be that many do need more healing and loving. And for those of you in a position to do so, lend your loving and healing to them as you work with change in your own lives as well. Yes, I'm yes, glad you added that. that because it's true there are some people in the world with their beliefs who view this as 
the doom and gloom, the punishment from yes. that religious perspective that God yes. is, these are acts of God and God is punishing us. Yes, yes exactly. Mm -hmm. It is not. Uh, uh, no. The, the same amount of love is, is given out to absolutely everyone. And it's a, an immense amount. And it is but for each person to clear away all of the, the shrubbery that's, that's in the way of receiving that love and light that is there. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Well, let's see, we have, I just got the signal about two minutes left. Right. So I'm looking at my list here. Yeah. Oh, one issue mm, that's, I don't know, this is kind of a big one too, but I'll throw it out and see what happens. Throw away. Um, <laughs> something that, that's been in the news, again, quite a bit, is children being tried as adults. Very painful subject yes. to me personally to, to see this happening. Yes. Yes, and uh, this is another issue of, of punishment, we would say. Ah. All right. Well, it, 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 it speaks of an attitude that says, well, if you want to act like adults, we will treat you like adults. And it is true that there is a jadedness that has expanded from, uh, from the adult world into the adolescent and child world, a jadedness such that the uh, children and adolescents appear to be growing up faster. And so the adult response is, uh. all right, we'll treat you like adults and we'll punish you like adults. Unfortunately, I just got a 30-second yes. message, so I'm going to have to interrupt you at this. Yes. But that helped. All right, then. I want to thank the audience once again for their attention and the name of the show you've been watching is Living Wisdom. This is Patty Paul saying goodbye until the next time.